grade 6 math number 8.3 compare theoretical probability and experimental probability. In experimental probability we actually are figuring the number of times the event occurs over the total number of the trials as a ratio. We're actually doing the physical work. In theoretical probability we're not doing any physical work. We're thinking and we're looking at the number of ways an event can occur and we're comparing it to the total of equally likely outcomes. So what I did was I have my color wheel and if you've seen the previous video you know that I spun my color wheel 20 times and it landed on the blue three times, the yellow two times, the red eight times, and the green seven times. Here's the percentage of times out of a hundred that they landed on those colors. Blue was 15, yellow was 10, and see each of these P's stand for probability, and that's the event. The color is the event. So if you saw this up here, it says P event. That's the probability of the event. Well, I'm missing a T there. So the event is it landing on the blue or the yellow or the red or the green, and then out of the 20 spins, I turn it into a percentage, and that's the amount of times it landed on it. When I did a number line, we saw that 40% of the time it landed on red, 35% of the time it was green, 15% was blue, and 10% was yellow. Now, according to theoretical probability, which we figure without spinning, we look at the fact that the color wheel has four colors, yellow, red, green, and blue, and that the chance of it landing on blue, the event of blue happening, is a one out of four chance, or 25% chance. We didn't spin anything, that's just how it looks, because there's one blue and out of four colors, it's got a one out of four chance, right? So, if we look at what actually happened, we can see it only happened 15% of the time. Hmm. Alright, well, I want you to remember from the previous video that the complement of an event is the ways the event cannot occur. It's the opposite of it occurring. So out of 100% of the time it happening, if it happens 25%, the complement would be 75, okay? And the little tilde mark means not blue, all right? Well, here's what happened. I tried, because in this trial I spun it 20 times, I tried spinning it 50 times, okay? So my experimental uh, probability actually happened with actual outcomes compared to the theoretical one I just looked at the paper and figured what would happen. The theoretical one looked great written but didn't come true according to the first trial of 20 spins. It was way off, wasn't it? It's not 25% of the time that it's landing on each color. Well, when I did 50 tr times of spinning the hand around, look at what I got. 24, 32, 18, and 26. It's very, very close to what the theoretical said. Okay? It was close to the second trial with 50 spins. The experimental probability will change every time we try spinning sets of more spins. So would they have been more alike if we spun the wheel a thousand times? Is it becoming more accurate as we do more spins? Yes, it is. So when we look at our number line over here, we can see how far apart the colors are, but when we look at it over here, look at how they're all clustered together. When we did 50 spins, I wonder what would happen if I did a thousand spins. I've got a lot of other things I need to do than to spin that thing a thousand times, but I bet it would become more accurate. And you know what? I bet that's why when they try doing drug testing or other types of scientific testing, that they want to try it thousands of times before they can say actually for sure that it's a certain way or not. They want to make sure that they do enough trials that they can prove their theory or not. Doesn't that make sense? Huh. Scientific method. Okay. I'm going to see you in the next video. I hope this was clear and that you understood the difference between the two and how the more you do the trials, the more accurate the theoretical probability will be. Okay. Bye.